thank you everyone for having me here talking about LifeA client extensions. So before I start, I will just, just go for my first, let's say, slogan, which is like, Usually as a sales engineer, if you want to sell something, it's better to show it, neither than just looking into slides, talking about it in the slides. With a client extension, it gave us like the ability to build something very faster. So imagine this ability that when I give it to a partner or a customer to build or to customize LifeRay. So that's where it comes, the client extension. So in this session today, I will be showing you examples, but the idea is not to show you the examples as much as to show you the efforts that you need to put to build something similar to that. So just a quick recap. I will not talk a lot about this. So we have like four types, very simple. We have the UI, we have the microservice, configuration, and patch. So anything that comes into the browser, that's a UI. Anything that will render something on the browser, that's a UI. If I'm doing any logic at the backend, that's a microservice. If I'm doing configuration for LifeRay, that's a configuration. And the patch is like to create definition or to patch entries within Lifer. Now, when and where and how? That's a common question that I get from partners and customers. So if we think about it when, it's whenever there is a customization or there is a custom logic that you want to implement, but you need to keep in mind that before you go for customization to look inside Lifer. Do we have that before we go and reinvent the wheel? Otherwise, just do it. Now, where you can use the same custom elements or customization or client extension on a pass or SaaS or self-hosted the same way that you're doing it. There is no change. And my favorite part is how, because in a how, there is no how. Because you do it the way that you like and LifeRay will adapt. The only thing that you need to change is like just to inject two files, which is like an ID card, like will let LifeRay understand that you're doing this logic and it sits somewhere else or inside your server and this is what does it do exactly. Because we allow like no limitation for any, let's say, technology stack. You can do your microservice with any language. You can do your front end with any language, JavaScript language. So let's just start with the first example. So the first example, which is like Brian was talking about is today, which is live right now. You can go to help.liferay.com and you can find it, which is a full-fledged implementation of a Liferay Learn which is a learning management system. And to build a learning management system, you need to like, think about the database, you need to think about the DAL access layer, business access layer, then the user interface. And there's different user interface, one for the admin, one for the, the let's say, the customer or the end user. But when it comes to LifeRay with a client extension, oh, it's not working, the video. <laughs> OK, it's supposed to work, the video here. Let me try. It's not working, OK. Yeah, it's starting. Yeah, that's it. So what you're looking at right now, it's not customized. So if you look here at the video here, this is used using our, let's say, experience manager. So I didn't put any effort to build such user interface. Wherever, however, there was customization because I need some custom logic in my UI, which is with the navigation menu. So instead of building the whole user interface, I just focus on the portions that I needed. That's it. So on the side here, I'm showing you the breakdown of the customization that we have done in here. So if you look at the major one, it's 60%, it was the object. So it means no code. So I built the whole structure of our learning management system without writing a single line of code. So if I want to go without customization as like whatever you saw in the navigation menu, then I don't need the other 20%, which is the one for the navigation menus and this kind of small tweaking for the user interface. And finally, we have the microservice, which we have it in there for one reason, like I need to have enrollment. So I have only the logic for the enrollments, how I can accommodate the enrollment based on a rules or a business rules that I have. So the nice thing here, instead of thinking about everything from scratch, I just focused on the logic and I trust Liferay. So I have used the authentication, I have used the experience manager. So right now the LMS can be personalized. It can deliver personalized courses based on the behavior of the customer or the end user or the learner within the platform. Did I write any single line of code? No. All those screens that you're looking at right now with all the mapping, it happened from the object builder. I didn't write code for that. So it will give you a better time to market, which is very important for you as a customer or as a partner. Now, the second implementation was about universal connector. So I need a way 
that will allow me to integrate with any external data source. And that wasn't just an example. It is not something that you can use in the production. We built this just to give you an example of how powerful proxy object is. So the idea here is like, I have an API, external API. I want to integrate that with the experience manager. I want to use it within Liferay without writing a code. So with an object entry manager, with some configuration with the patch, we managed to build this. So right now, as you can see here, we have the universal connector interface, which will allow you to add a configuration to connect to any external data source. What is written there as a code is just my logic to connect to the external data source. However, Liferay authentication managed for me the authentication. Experience Manager managed for me the integration with Liferay experiences to add those pages, sorry, to add the, the content to pages within Liferay. And finally, if you look at the headless, which I need, or let's say Liferay, once you create the proxy object, it will generate auto, uh, sorry, auto generate an API for you, which you can consume from the Experience Manager for a React application, for example, or a mobile application to consume this data through the proxy object. And the nice thing here is like 30% was on the, on the patch, 10% on the UI only, and the back end, which is 60%, which is only the connector. Can I extend this? Yes. All what I need to do is to add one page of code to extend for another connector. Now, this one was a funny example because we have a huge customer in Abu Dhabi, which is Formula One. Uh, they called Yas Marina Circuit. And in, we, we won the, the deal with them. And we were just sitting together with the customer. And he was saying, like, you know what? You have a DXP, but I have a creative agency. And we are uploading the videos into your CMS. So now my, my people want to review those videos. And they want to add like a comments while they are watching the video. They want to just add a comment. And then they send those comments to the agency to review it and fix it. But adding a comment on a video is not like something that you need to monitor the second and then add the comment in there. You need something interactive. So we have managed to build this for them. Let me let's just watch the video together. So this is an interface built in React, by the way. So this is the video first. So you select the video, and then you play the video. And while you are watching the video, you can just click on the video and stop it and add the comments. And once you finish, you can generate a report. Now, I don't think you will imagine how long it took us to build this. It took us two days. Imagine that you are building this from scratch without Liferay, without client extension. And the amount of customization that we have done, it's 75 on the UI. I was just focused on the React application to do this trick. That's all what we have done. And that's blow our customer mind, because time to market was very important for those guys. So I will just go for a demo. But I'm not brave enough, like Marco and Brian. So I have recorded the demo. And we'll just go step by step on the demo. So this is a very good use case for us here to discuss. So I have here like a social media poster. So the customer want to have like to manage his social media pages through Liferay. So I want to add, the, add the, the article in there, then have some people to review. And after it's being reviewed, I need automatically to publish it to LinkedIn. And then from Liferay, I need to monitor the impressions. I need to monitor the interaction with this post. And at the same time, the customer came to us and said, you know what, I need to integrate AI. So I need to have that AI to generate for me the post. So how many hours we need to build, uh, let's say, we need to have this implemented. So let me just show you first the example. I'll show you what is happening, and then I'll show you the code. So now I have asked ChatGPT to give me the article. I'm happy with this. I will remove the whole of this. And then I will select the, the, uh, the accounts. I will select the social media page. And then I have it as a draft, because I need to integrate this with the workflow engine. I don't need to build it myself. Because I have an object. Object is integrated with our information framework, so I can use objects, uh, sorry, uh, workflows. Now, once it's approved, let's just publish it. We go to LinkedIn now. We refresh. The post is there. So how many hours we spent on this? Or let's say, how was the complexity of this? Let's just discover together. So this is a workspace, the normal one that you know it. The only change is here is like, instead of having modules, I have client extensions. 
and they are three. So I have one to manage my, let's say, data, which is the patch. I'm creating the object definitions. I have the other one, which is the Node.js. I love Node.js. I don't know anything about Java. So I use Node.js. So I have the Node.js, which will manage for me the backend. And I have the frontend, which created all of this fancy UI in React. If you look at the next level, you don't see anything different. The only thing that is different here is like, I have a client extension.yaml, and I have the Docker file. So that's the only change. So you write the code the way that you like, and then you can just import it to LiveRay workspace, and you just add those two files. And later on, we discover what, why we add those files. And finally, this is just to show you the, the let's say, the, the code, nothing related to LiveRay. There is no dependency injection. I don't need to learn anything about LiveRay. All what I need to know is how to call APIs. That's it. Now, if you look at the code here, this is a normal entry point for any Node.js. I'm building a microservice in Node.js, and this is my entry point. Do you see anything related to LiveRay? Nothing. I'm just building a simple Node.js code. Now, there is what was two logics, mainly two logic in the application. One is to communicate with ChatGPT. The other one is like to post to LinkedIn. So instead of thinking about the whole cycle, communicating with the database, or let's say the, the data in, in LiveRay, I was just focused on the routes that I need. So I have the publish, as you can see, very simple code. I get the request as an action from LiveRay. And then I will redirect this to call the API of LinkedIn. Now the second one, which is integrating with ChatGPT. So as you can see here, I just focus on how to communicate with ChatGPT. I don't need to learn anything about like, the LiveRay backend. So this will give you an idea here about how much time, cost, and resource agnostic that we are right now. So there is no specific technology stack you need. Like especially with AI, you can go with Perl. If you want to go with, uh, let's say, a cheaper, let's say, resources or engineers, you can go with Node.js engineers, right? So that's how it goes right now. And finally, this is I'm calling like ChatGPT, getting the result, I'm returning it to my, my front end. Thank you. <laughs>